hi to all those who are watching this. I think in the last class, if you are aware, we just went through DC transients after initial conditions and we took up these two circuits RL series and where another RL circuit where the switch is being moved from 1 to 2 and we got an expression for I of t as V by R into 1 minus E to the minus R by L into t and in this case it was V by R E to the minus R by L into t because the current dies down to 0 in this type of circuit after the switch is moved to 2. Similarly, we went through another circuit R c, two circuits of R c and the expression was I of t is equal to V by R e to the minus R t by R c, time constant was R c, whereas in this I of t is minus V by R e to the minus t by R c in this. In this case, the sign is negative just because the direction of the current will be opposite once the switch is moved to 2, because the capacitor would have charged when the switch is in position 1, the capacitor would have been charged with this positive plate, uh, top plate positive and finally, it acts as a voltage source thereby the current driven is in the opposite direction that is what this negative sign indicates, it will be V by R e to the minus T by R C and we saw the voltage across the resistor, inductor and we saw the total voltage is equal to the forcing function or the supply voltage in the last class and we saw for RLC second order differential equation in the last step we just stopped there and uh, I will just I will just take you from this point. In the last as we saw that the roots of the second order equation was minus r, r by 2 L whole squared plus or minus root of r by 2 L whole squared minus 1 by L C. It is in a second order differential equation for a R L, R L and a C it was R L and C when the switch was closed, we arrived at an equation as V is equal to R into I plus L d i by d t plus 1 by C integral i d t. Differentiating this equation, we got d squared i by d t squared and getting it into the standard form, we have d squared i by d t squared plus R by L into i plus i by L c is equal to V by L and we saw that we have two roots R 1 and R 2 which are nothing but minus R by 2 L plus or minus root of R by 2 L whole squared minus 1 by L c and we saw that this will have three different cases, case 1, case 2 and case 3. The first one is when r by 2 L whole squared is greater than 1 by L c. When I have r by 2 L whole squared greater than 1 by L c, it is said to be over damped, over damped circuit. When r by 2 L whole squared is equal to 1 by L c, it is said to be critically damped. And when R by 2 L whole squared is less than L C, it is said to be underdamped, underdamped circuit. So, for this, there will be a slight change in the expression for the current because it is second order differential equation. So, if, if we assume this is alpha R by 2 L minus R by 2 L is alpha, and if we take this as term as beta, if it is over damped, I will get two real and unequal roots, I get two real and unequal roots, the roots will be alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta, the two roots will be alpha plus beta and alpha minus beta. Whereas, if r by 2 L whole squared in critically damped, if this happens to be 0, when r by 2 L whole squared these two cancels, if it is 0, both the roots will be repeated roots at r by 2 L, r 1 and r 2 will be repeated roots, it is alpha, both the roots lie at the same point. If r by 2 L whole squared is less than 1 by L c, I will have uh, under we call it as underdamped circuit, the roots r 1 and r 2 will be alpha plus j beta and alpha minus j beta, I will have two complex conjugate roots. So, the solution for this solution for current I of t solution for current I of t in this case and the solution for current I of t 
is given. In the first case, solution will be e to the power of minus alpha t, e to the power of minus alpha t, a constant a into e to the power of beta t plus b e to the power of minus beta t, e to the power of alpha t has been taken outside. This will be the solution for current. In the second case, again it will be e to the power of minus alpha t, it will be a plus b t will be the solution for current. In the third case, it will be e to the power of alpha t into two constants c 1 cos beta t cos beta t plus c 2 sin beta t. So, these are the different solutions we get depending on the roots of the equation. It is a second order equation. Now, the question is how do we evaluate these arbitrary constants a and b? These constants a b, two arbitrary constants are there. This is c 1, c 1 and c 2. How do we evaluate these two c 1 and c 2 using initial conditions? In the previous case, what we saw in R L and R C, we had only one arbitrary constant, we call it as A and with the help of the initial conditions I at 0 plus, we could evaluate arbitrary constant and then substitute in the equation. Here, instead of evaluating, we will take up a problem, a numerical problem and we will see how to evaluate A and B. In this case, because we have two arbitrary constants, one value, initial value at t equal to 0 plus, we require to evaluate one arbitrary constant and the derivative d i by d t at 0 plus is required. It can be v at 0 plus or d v by d t whatever it is depending on the situation. If it is a current, I require the initial value at t equal to 0 plus and the derivative of current at 0 plus to evaluate the two arbitrary constants and that gives us a complete solution for current. So, these are the three cases what we get in R L C is second order equation two roots depending on whether it is two real and unequal roots, two equal roots and a complex conjugate root. It is divided into three different cases. The solution for current will be now what we observe in the three different types of solution is I told you in the last class the current at t equal to 0 plus will be 0 because of the inductor, the current at infinity will be 0 because of the capacitor because he does not allow any current in uh, finally, because it acts as open, he acts as open at t equal to 0 plus. Therefore, in over damped circuit, the current before closing will be say 0 and it comes to 0. In case of a critically damped circuit, it comes to a 0, whereas in under damped circuit, we will have an oscillatory response, means it will be an exponential decay with a sinusoidally varying current, it will be oscillatory and it comes down to 0. So, we will have a envelope, exponential envelope and it dies down to 0. Most of the circuits what we design will be an under damped circuit. In the next semester, if you just take up control systems, you can see a step response of a second order system, where you will be looking at a similar response for a step input. So, today we will take up problems with numerical problems on R L, R C, slightly different than normal. We will be having two different changes in the switch, switch being closed and the other switch being open will be the first example what we take. So, we will go to the next problem a problem a numerical problem based on an R L circuit. First, we will try to understand the actual problem. In the R L circuit shown S 1, I have two switches S 1 and S 2, just observe two switches S 1 and S 2. S 1 is closed at t equal to 0, t equal to 0 S 1 is closed. After 4 millisecond, very important to know this, switch S 2 is opened means initially S 2 is closed and S 2 is opened after 4 millisecond. Now, the question is very simple, this is the circuit a simple R L circuit, find the current in the interval t greater than 0 less than t dash, t dash is nothing but the switch opening time at 4 millisecond and t greater than t dash after 4 millisecond one, one expression for current and before 4 millisecond from 0 another expression for current. We will see these are the solutions given, we will just try to derive the solutions. It is a simple R L circuit, the expression is equal to V by R into 1 minus 0 minus R by L into T, 
it is very simple, I will be just going slightly faster because we already dealt with this particular problem in the previous session. Okay. If you have any doubts, go to the previous session and see the solution for the expression. I will be just following all the steps, but I will be a bit fast because we will try to cover 3 to 4 problems today, which are quite interesting. In a simple RL circuit, what they have given, there is a switch which is closed, there is a resistor R1, there is another resistor R2 and there is an inductor. As I told you, it undergoes transition and steady state whenever there is a change in the element or the change in supply or any element is brought in or removed, whatever. There will be a transition steady state there. So, every change will have one equation. So, there is a switch across R2, the switch is closed, this is the opening switch. This is at T equal to 0. So, the voltage here is 100 volts, we will go stage by stage. If you understand this, probably you will get a better idea about what is that we are talking all these days under transient analysis. 50 ohms, 100 ohms resistor, 50 ohms, 100 ohms resistor and inductor is 0.1 in ray. This is opened at 4 millisecond, at T equal to 4 millisecond it is opened. Now, as we know, we will just initially, right. S1, this is S1, this is S2. S1 at t equal to 0, S1 is closed and at t equal to 0, S2 is also closed. Both are in the closed state at t equal to 0. Initially, S1 is closed, S2 is opened at 4 millisecond. If we will just write an equation, when I say S2 is closed, this becomes redundant. Therefore, the network will be 100 volts, switch is closed R1 and this switch is closed and I will have an inductor. This is a general network after switching V that is 100 volts, 50 ohms and 0.1 Henry. What will be the equation for this? The expression for this will be V by R into E to the power one into 1 minus E to the minus R by L into T, what we have derived earlier. If I just straight away start from the equation or I can write a loop equation 100 equal to 50 into I plus 0.1 di by dt, get it in the standard form, divide throughout by 0.1 that is L di by dt plus 500i equal to 1000, t equal to minus 500. Therefore, ICF complementary function of current equal to arbitrary constant A e to the power of minus 500t plus the particular integral of current P i will be the final steady state 100 divided by 50 is 2 amperes. I will write it as 2 P i. Therefore, current expression for current equal to I C of plus I P I A e to the power of minus 500 T plus 2 at T equal to 0 plus at T equal to 0 plus I at 0 plus will be 0. Therefore, if I substitute I at 0 plus will be 0, I will get A e to the power of 0 plus 2, A will be minus 2. Therefore, an expression for current I of T will be V by R that is 2 into 1 minus e to the power of minus 500 T. This is an expression for current at time T greater than 0 and less than T dash. Means, this is expression for current for T greater than 0 less than T dash. It is what we can see here. It is 2 e to the power of 2 into 1 minus e to the minus r by l, r by l is nothing but 500 into t. Now, the question is this is what we obtain. After the switching action, there is one more thing what they say at 4 millisecond you can observe here at 4 millisecond switch S 2 is open. Now, the question is the current will be increasing from 0 it 
keeps increasing and it reaches a value steady state that will be equal to 2 amperes with time. In between there is another switching action. Switching action means I am opening the switch at t equal to 4 millisecond. When I open the switch this register comes into picture till then it will be bypassing it acts as redundant a short across the register effectively it will be 0. Now, this register comes in. So, I will have another expression for current at any point here there is a switching action right. This is the expression for current for this curve 2 into 1 by 0 minus r by l into t. Now, there is another switching action. So, I will have another equation which has to be derived. Now, we will understand what do we mean by initial conditions or how do we evaluate arbitrary constant for another equation which is coming at t equal to 4 millisecond or which will be valid only after 4 millisecond not before 4 millisecond. So, case 2 that is at t equal to 4 millisecond S 2 is opened. When S 2 is opened I will get a new circuit altogether that means the circuit general network after switching S 1 is closed r 1 50 ohms is there r 2 comes into picture and I will have an inductor. It is 50, it is 100 because it is open. So, there is no point in even writing the switch because it is open switch and this is 0 0.1 Henry. If you just say this is 100 volts, we just try to derive an expression for the current after the switch is opened. Same procedure write integral differential equation and evaluate, but one thing while evaluating your arbitrary constant you need to evaluate the current at t equal to 4 millisecond using this equation a. This equation a, we will see what we mean by this. So, for the second case after the switch is opened, after the switch is opened right, if you write the equation it is 100 equal to 150 r into i plus 0 0.1 d i by d t. It is 150 into i 0 0.1 d i by d t. Divide throughout by 0 0.1 I get this as d i by d t plus 1500 i equal to 1000. So, d equal to minus 1500. So, as simple the complementary function of current will be the arbitrary constant a e to the power of minus 1500 t. This is as usual, but what will be a particular integral i p i? The current will be something different. At the final state it is this axis short, it will be 100 divided by 150. 100 divided by 150 will be 0 0.667, right. i p i will be 100 steady state current divided by 150 is equal to 0.667. Therefore, the complementary function plus the particle integral put together will be your actual expression for current i of t will be. In fact, if I want to say t the switching action takes place at 4 millisecond therefore, I can say t minus t dash where t dash is 4 milliseconds right. So, if it is at 5 millisecond, it is after 1 millisecond after the switch is being closed. 5 minus 4 becomes 1 millisecond after S2 is opened. So, this is you need to add this particular term. It is A e to the power of minus 1500 T minus T dash plus 0 0.667 amperes. Now, the question is how do we evaluate A? To evaluate A, I need to know the initial condition. Initial condition means I need to know the current at t equal to 4 millisecond. For the next transition to occur, it occurs only at 4 millisecond. So, therefore, use this equation and find the current at 4 millisecond. I at 4 millisecond becomes your initial value for this to evaluate the arbitrary constant A. If I just calculate I at 4 millisecond using this it is 2 into 1 minus e to the power of minus 500 into 4 in 10 to the power of minus 3. You will get a current 
equal to 1.729 1.729 amperes it has not reached steady state means this is 2 amperes is steady state somewhere here when the current is 1.729 switching action takes place and it settles down at a value 0.667 not at 2 in the next case. So, with this as your initial condition substitute that here at t equal to 4 millisecond current will be that becomes your initial current for the next switching 1.729 at t equal to 4 millisecond this is equal to a e to the power of 0 because 4 millisecond minus 4 millisecond is 0 plus 0.667. So, a will be the difference of 1.729 minus 0.667 therefore, a will be 1.06 arbitrary constant a therefore, an expression for current t equal to 1.06 e to the power of minus 1500 t minus t dash plus 0.667. This is an expression for current at t greater than t dash. This is quite interesting. Now, let us see how to how the current is going to vary. The switching can take place this switching can take place any time after S 1 it has happened at t equal to 4 millisecond right this equation if we plot i'll get this curve but it has not reached steady state still because it has not reached steady state still the current starts diverting this was the current what we evaluated at 4 millisecond it starts at that value and finally when t goes to infinity this term goes to 0 it settles down at 0 0.667 because that is the final current in this particular loop 100 divided by 150 because the axis is a short. Therefore, the current here will be this will be 0 0.667 amperes the final state. So, one equation for this and another equation for this curve students is it clear we have two switching one when the switch s 1 is closed I got an expression for current I of t when s 2 is opened means till 4 millisecond this was closed this was redundant now s 2 is open therefore 50 plus 100 150 ohms finally the current settles down means actually this is how your circuit will be at this there will be a switching action this is just to tell that it is going to it could have reached steady state otherwise right because there was a switching action taking place the current raises up to 1.729 and then falls you would have switched at 3 millisecond right sometime before it would have changed from 3 right this is what we understand by doing classical method the analysis of a circuit using classical method. So, this is if you understand this probably you will understand you will appreciate the advantages of initial conditions and this classical method. Anyway, we have a modern method uh, in the next chapter they will be explaining you how to solve such problems using modern technique that is using Laplace transform that is quite easy. Uh, this is how we interpret this problem we will take another problem say we got this sensor at 4 millisecond 1.729 and substituting that we obtained a and the obtained answer is i of t is 1.060 minus 1500 t minus t dash t dash is another switching state. So, we will go to one more problem a constant voltage source is applied to a series R L circuit here the problem he says a constant voltage source is applied to a series R L circuit by closing a switch he says a series R L circuit by closing a switch it is R and L circuit by closing a switch. He has not given any values of voltage resistance and inductors here he has not given the value of V, V is not known, R is not known, L is not known that is what he wants you to find. 
the voltage across L is 25 volts, he says something else. The voltage across this voltage V L is 25 volts at t equal to 0 and drops to 5 volts at t equal to 2 millisecond. He is talking about the voltage across the inductor. If L is 2 Henry, what is the value of R? Everything is there in what we have gone through. What we need to do is only introspect and then see what is the relevant equation to be used and to get a value for R. So, it is a simple circuit, it is a simple RL circuit. In a simple RL circuit, he has given some information. We need to see what will be what is V L if you just see in the previous section expression for current in a RL circuit is V by R into 1 minus e to the power of minus R by L into T. We have seen this in the previous problem as such, but in case of a series R and L voltage across this what is voltage across the inductor L di by dt L into di by dt. So, voltage across the inductor will be L derivative of this current derivative of this is 0 we did this in the previous it is minus V by R e to the power of minus R by L into T into minus R by L R R L and L will cancel. So, voltage across the inductor will be minus into minus plus V e to the power of minus R by L into T. So, we got this expression for the voltage across the inductor. This is what we are interested in in, the, in this case because it says the voltage across the inductor at T equal to 0 is 25. So, the first condition we will try to see at T equal to 0 value of the voltage across the inductor is 25 volts means substitute for T at T equal to 0 voltage across the inductor is 25. So, substitute these two values 25 equal to V e to the power of 0. I get one more information that I got the voltage V from this. So, I got V is 25 this indicates V is equal to 25 e to the power of 0 is 1 V is 25 and next he says and drops to 2 millisecond 5 volts after 2 millisecond. So, there is a change in voltage 2 millisecond just substitute for T it drops to 5 volts. So, what is V 25 e to the power of minus R by L is given only the value of L as 2 Henry's into T is 2 millisecond 10 to the power of minus 3. The question is I can just bring this down 5 by 25 25 e to the power of minus r by l is 2 into 2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 take natural log on both the sides and solve this you will get only unknown here is r I get a value take natural log to base c right and then solve this you will get the value of resistance r as 128.75 ohms. So, we have calculated all this from the expression for current I of t. So, first of all you need to understand carefully what is that he has asked and what is the equations we need to understand to solve this. So, once you solve this you will get this current 128.75 as the resistance. In all the previous cases values of resistance inductance voltage was given and we used to find the current expression for I of t. In this case it is slightly different he says the voltage across L right the voltage across L is what he wanted to calculate ok. This is voltage across L is what we have taken. Now, we will go to another uh, next problem. In the circuit shown the switch is closed on position 1 at t equal to 0. I am going to wait fast because I need to cover 
another a couple of problems here in R L and R C. In a circuit shown the switch is closed at on position 1. Just see the circuit first before getting into any problem directly do not jump and solve the problem. See what the examiner wants you to or what is that he is interested with. Circuit shown the switch is closed to position 1 at equal to 0 and then move to position 2 after 1 millisecond similar to the previous problem what we saw right. Similar to this problem there are two switching states here it is moved to 1 what will be the expression for current I of t. I will just take you directly to the problem I will not solve st step by step ok. We know the expression for I of t V by R into 1 minus 0 minus R by L into t. So, in a given problem he says switch is first closed on to this 50 volts then see the polarity of your supply. I have a R and a L simple circuit. I have a simple R 500 ohms 0.2 entries with 50 volts. With this being the positive direction of current I, what will be your expression for current I of T? expression for current I of t will be V by R into 1 minus e to the power minus R by L into t. Therefore, in the first position for current at position 1, then it is moved to position 2 at 1 millisecond. After 1 millisecond the switch is moved to 1. Therefore, at position 1 expression for current I of t will be V by R into 1 minus e to the minus r by l into t v by r is 50 by 500 it is 0.1 i of t from the standard equation v by r into 1 minus e to the minus r by l into t v by r is 0 0.1 e to the power minus r by l r is 500 by l 0 0.2 is 2500. 1 minus e to the power of minus 2500 t. So, he says now if I just plot this first we will try to understand what the question is all about. He says the switch is close to 1 it starts here we know that t equal to 0 1 minus 1 it is 0. So, it starts here and goes on and increases to a value which is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 amps at the end this is I. There is some switching which is occurring he says and then it is moved to position 2, it is moved to position 2 after 2 millisecond sorry after 1 millisecond. So, then move to position to find the time at which the current is 0 and reversing the direction. What happens in this case? First the current will be in this direction just see. Once look at the polarity they are opposite to each other. Once it is switched to this switch is moved to 2 the current will be in the opposite direction flowing means some switching takes place with time t somewhere here at 1 millisecond the current starts decreasing and then it settles at a value 0 0.01 because it is opposite to the previous one sorry 0 0.1 amps. Now, the question is what is the time taken for the current to reach 0? What is T for the current to reach 0? We know that it is increasing it has not reached steady state may or may not have reached there is another switching action at 1 millisecond switching is at 1 millisecond. The current should reverse from the existing value to minus 0.1. So, first of all we will see how to get an expression for this curve right i we got an expression for this curve i of t 
we will see at after 1 millisecond how to find an expression for i of t. After 1 millisecond the expression will be after 1 millisecond the circuit is r and now I need to know what is the current at t equal to 0 plus after 1 millisecond I want to know the expression for the current which is flowing in this direction r and 50 with respect to the original direction the final steady state current will be 0.1 therefore, it is i of t will be constant a right we call it as instead of a I call it as a dash a dash is a constant a dash e to the power of minus r by l into t minus 2500 t plus the final steady state this is your complementary function of current plus now in this case your particle integral will be 0 0.1 amperes only as in this case. So, it is 0 0.1, but the current direction has changed because the direction of the current is opposite because of this I call it as minus 0 0.1 with respect to the direction taken here. So, it is minus 0 0.1 just because of the now to evaluate the arbitrary constant A I need to know what was the current when it was switched to position 2. So, to calculate that evaluate at t equal to 1 millisecond find current at 1 millisecond using this equation A using A evaluate the current at 1 millisecond current at 1 millisecond happens to be 0 0.09179 0 0.09179 substitute this value of current in this equation to evaluate a dash same as in the previous case it is not t it is t minus t dash because there is a switching t dash is 1 millisecond or you should take t minus t dash as the difference of the 2 and then take it as 1 t. If you take this t as t from the instant at which 0 then it is t minus t dash t dash is 1 millisecond. Now, we get a as i at t is equal to 0 0.09179 is equal to a dash e to the power of 0 minus 0 0.1 if I take 0 0.1 a dash happens to be 0 0.19179 0 0.19179 therefore, the expression for current I of t after switching to 2 will be 0 0.19179 e to the power of minus 2500 t minus t dash minus 0 0.1. Now, the question is not just finding this he has gone one step ahead and he says find the time this is very important at which the current is 0 and reversing the direction current is 0 means just substitute i equal to 0 here and find t only unknown here is t in your equation b his question is we will try to interpret this is a expression for this curve right exponentially decaying curve and settling down at minus 0.1 he wants to know what is this time at this instant when it crosses this that is what he says when find the time at which current is 0 means substitute i of t as 0 and find t we know t dash t dash is 1 millisecond. So, substitute this means 0 equal to 0 0.19179 e to the power of minus 2500 t minus t dash minus 0 0.1 solve this it is 0 0.1 by 0 0.19179 e to the power of minus 2500 t minus t dash take natural log simplify find you will get t as 
1.261 seconds means this time is at the instant watch 1.269 seconds. The switching is at 1 after 0 0.269 seconds the current would have passed will be having 0 and then starts reversing. This is what this particular problem is all about because I have to wind up this particular session with another problem with RLC. I will just take you through uh, RLC circuit. The next one is on an RLC because I told you that we will be evaluating arbitrary constant. Uh, how do we evaluate the arbitrary constant? I told you we will just show it to you through a numerical problem. This is a case where a simple RLC circuit I told you we have three different cases. Uh, RLC says RLC with R 200 L 0.1 C 100 microfarad has a constant voltage 200 volts applied at t equal to 0. Find the current assuming the capacitor has no initial charge. So, we will just first find the roots of the equation first. Once we find the roots of the equation, it will be easy for us to understand how to uh, find the expression for current. What is the what are the roots of the equation? I will just take you through because I require only the values of R L C here. Right. It might dip, it might be uh, over damped, critically damped or under damped as we started off with this today's class. It all depends on the roots of the equation. So, it is roots R 1 and R 2 and R 2 equal to minus R by 2 L plus or minus root of r by 2 l whole squared minus 1 by l c. He has given all the values resistance, inductance and capacitance has been given here. r l c, if we just substitute you will get the two roots as r 1 and r 2 as minus 51.36 and the other one is minus 1948.68. So, if there are two real and unequal roots, this is a case where it is over damped, not under damped. It is not that means this case R by 2 whole squared is greater than 1 by L c. Therefore, it is alpha plus beta and the other one is alpha minus beta. So, this is alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta. Okay. So, what will be the solution for current in this case? Solution for current will be e to the power of alpha t into a e to the power of beta t plus b e to the power of minus beta t. So, we can just take this approximate this as 52 and we will take this as 1948. So, if you just see the expression for current i of t, we can just write i of t is 1 constant a e to the power of minus 52 t plus another constant b e to the power of minus 1948 t. Once we have both the roots, I can directly write these two equations. Now, we know in a sim simple R L C series circuit, R L and C series circuit, I at 0 plus is 0, I at infinity is also 0. So, if you want to evaluate the arbitrary constant, I told you I, I require two things, the derivative as well as this. So, I at 0 plus is a e to the power of 0 plus b e to the power of 0. So, i at 0 plus is 0 indicates a plus b equal to 0. This indicates a is equal to minus b. Very important information this gives. So, one thing we have obtained a is minus b, the relation between a and b is what we got. To evaluate the arbitrary constant, I told you we require the derivative of the current d i by d t. So, once you know the derivative d i by d t at t equal to 0 plus, we can evaluate the arbitrary constant. So, what is d i by d t at 0 plus? d i by d t at 0 plus will be <coughs> p equal to r into i plus l d i by d t plus 1 by c integral i d t. This is voltage across the inductor voltage across the capacitor d i by d t is equal to v minus r into i minus V c by L. I at 0 plus and V c at 0 plus is 0 
both are zeros. Voltage across the capacitor is zero. Current through the circuit is zero at equal to zero plus. So it is just V by L. So I d i by d t at zero plus. We have found all this in initial. Uh, it is two hundred by the value of voltage is two hundred. L is point one. So two hundred by point one is two thousand amps per second is d i by d t at zero plus. So, with this d i by d t at 0 plus, differentiate this equation. I have an equation for the current A, differentiate this equation, substitute for d i by d t and you will get a value of A and substitute for B as minus A whatever and you will get A. Means, differentiating this, we get d i by d t at 0 plus will be minus 52 a e to the power of minus 52 t minus 52 a e to the power of minus 52 t and differentiating this we will get minus 1948 b e to the power of minus 1948 t and substitute this condition here b is minus a right or a is minus b we will get d and substituting your 2000 here d i by d t at 0 plus equal to 2000 equal to minus 52 put t equal to 0 52 into minus b minus 1948 into b e to the power of 0. With this if you just solve you will get a as 1.055 a is equal to 1.055 and b is minus a minus 1.055 minus 52 minus 1948 will be almost this near to 2000. So, you will get a is 1.055 and b 1.055 solution for current i of t i of t will be 1.055 e to the power of minus 52 t minus 1.055 e to the power of minus 1948 t. This will be a equation for current. This is how we evaluate I told you in a RLC series circuit, I will have two arbitrary constants a and b, a and b. I require i at 0 plus information and the information of the first derivative to evaluate the arbitrary constants in a RLC series circuit. So, uh, in this case we obtained the roots we obtained the expression for current i of t. I have just one problem, I will just show you the last problem for this we will wind up transient analysis. In a series R L C circuit, in a series R L C circuit, R is 5, L is 0.1, C is 500 microfarads. In this case, I will just give you the roots. The roots are complex and conjugate. So, the roots are complex and conjugate the roots r 1 and r 2 are r 1 equal to minus 25 plus j 139.19 and r 2 is minus 25 minus j 139.19. So, with this if you just try to substitute and find the arbitrary constants a and b the solution will be 0.72 e to the power of minus 25 t sin 139 t. You will get uh, the value of A as 0 0.3597 by j and so on and if you simplify you will get this as sin 139 it says exponentially decaying sinusoidally varying component it will be exponentially decaying sinusoidally varying current. So, it decays exponentially and the current changes. So, uh, this is how the response, this is uh, under damped circuit, right. So, we have taken a problem on under damped, this is a problem on under damped circuit. The previous problem was on over damped, this is on uh, over damped circuit. So, with this take up other problems. In case you have any doubts, you have my email ID 
call me or write to me on my mail. Call me either on this number or mail to me on dineshmn at rvc.edu.in. With this, we will just stop transient analysis. We have taken you through transient analysis, sorry, initial conditions RL, RC, RLC. We have only three elements, that is why it is so simple. I feel it is very easy once you understand the concepts and the transient analysis on DC alone. In fact, I wanted to take you through AC analysis finally, because instead of a DC supply, I have a AC source. The term becomes a bit lengthy, concepts are almost same. You can just take this through AC analysis and then it is more interesting, but it is beyond your syllabus. Your syllabus says it is only DC transient analysis, right? The two with RL, RC, and RLC. So, with this transient analysis is over. Next class, the teacher will be other teacher will be teaching you uh, Laplace transforms, how to tackle such problems using Laplace transforms, it is a modern method. Relatively, it is very interesting. You have gone through Laplace transform in your previous semesters. So, the initial conditions are incorporated at the beginning. Thank you.